Under 23 Giro d'Italia, stage 7 up to Montespluga, 29k at 6%. Tom Pidcock is in the lead, 58 seconds ahead of Colliani, and here we go. So we've got Colliani's team is on the front, drilling it. We've got to break up the road with Connor Brown and some other guys who we're going to see. Pidcock's sitting nice in fourth wheel. He's got Tom Gloag and Ben Healy um, with him. Uh, his only teammates. Uh, then we've got the Zalf Rider um, in the green jersey. Uh, he's, you know, obviously pretty strong sprinter, uh, looking quite good um, as well. And he's going to start doing some work. Pickock's looking pretty relaxed. He knows he's got this in the bag. And this climb is is long. It's, it's really long. They, they rode it pretty hard as well. I think five and a half to six was be here for most of it. Um, and it was pretty like team tactic in your style with just people set, setting tempo on the front. Um, so here's Connor Brown, the NTT rider. He rides for NTT Continental team. Um, he was looking super strong, actually. He was just literally riding everyone off his wheel. Uh, this looks like a super nice climb. It's quite quick, um, obviously 6%, but there are some steeper sections around there. It's obviously more like 8%. And this poor boy, he's getting spat. Connor Brown is just, he's just motoring. Like, no one's coming close to him. He has a pretty low cadence as well. Like, he doesn't look like he's going that fast. It almost looks like it's in slow-mo. Um, it's not, he just obviously enjoys a slightly lower cadence. Um, he, I think he's an Australian lad. Um, he looks pretty strong. I reckon he'll get a contract with NTT soon um, based on his results in the under 23 Giro today. I mean, when you know what results these guys get and how fast they climb, uh, then it's pretty obvious. Now we now got a Colombian rider who managed to join him um, up the road as well. Um, they, they, you know, settle down and just start working. They don't start attacking each other. They know that, you know, Pickock's behind. Pickock's the strongest rider in the race by quite a long way. Um, we might as well just work and see as, see what sort of stage result we can get. You know, we know Pickock's going to win, but we might be able to um, get a decent result. It looks like the NTT rider is using BMC's like old time machine with rim brakes, which is pretty interesting. A lot of these guys have discs, I assume, because of sponsors. But um, this Colombian lad um, in the yellow jersey, uh, who we'll see his name in a minute, uh, Merchan Cardona, he is um, also running a rim brake as well, which is always, always nice to see. I love a bit of rim brake bikes, me, myself. Both running just one bottle, which I guess sort of makes sense. Through the tunnel, we've now got the green jersey leader for South. Um, kill it, slaying himself. I don't really know why, why they're chasing. It should be Pidcock. They should have really lent on Pidcock a lot and said, you know, you've got the, the um, pink jersey. Like that Brown, Connor Brown is pretty strong. Like, you know, you should, you, you need to put, put him to work, but they didn't. Instead, Zalf started riding. And I didn't really understand that. We now get a bit, a bit of games up front, which again, doesn't make sense. Just ride together um, and just see what sort of result you can get. I mean, the Peloton still had a lot of guys left. Um, so I didn't, I didn't really get that um, by Merchant Conan down. Um, I think is how you pronounce the name. If any Colombian viewers uh, or Spanish speakers, let me know. Um, how you pronounce his name. The gap with 9.5k to go is still a minute and 24, so it's decent. Um, but I, I don't really get why Zalfa on the front. But alas, uh, maybe they had a genius tactic. Maybe they had someone in third. I, I, they didn't look like they had anyone that close on GC. Sean Quinn, for you American viewers, got spat big time on the stage. Uh, unfortunately, he was looking pretty good, um, you know, to get top three in this. But I guess he doesn't really care. He's got his contract with Quick Step. That's all he needs to do. Um, the Americans are looking pretty good. I was talking to my mate the other day, and we were saying, like, there's a lot of good guys, like Matthew Jorgensen from Movistar. We now zoom ahead, and uh, this is Alf guys on the attack, and Gloag, and who we're going to speak about a lot later, and Pidcock make the move. Um, obviously, Pidcock sort of like, well, it could work, but to be honest, I don't really need to. Um, he's got a gap. And Tom Gloag, he's a first year under 23, and oh my, he's a strong old boy. Um, he pulls some monster turns coming up. There's more and more people bridging across. The pace wasn't really there. I believe that's Colliani there, um, who is Pidcock's closest rival, um, who's now bridging across. So obviously Pidcock's like, oh, well, not ideal. He's not really drilling it that much. Um, obviously, if he's managing to get across, because he dropped about like a minute the other day on a 12-minute climb. And so on this climb, again, Pidcock's just riding smart. He knows he's got it in the bag. Um, he's just cruising around. Uh, doesn't, you know, there's no need to stress. I think he then says to Gloag, like, do you want to go on the front and just, just drill it and see who can survive? And he's like, yep, fair. So that is pretty much what happens. Um, Gloag gets on the front now and just ruins himself. Um, super strong rider from London, I heard. Um, and, you know, if you ride for VCL in London, then you're probably going to be in a world tour because that's what they all seem to do. Fred Wright, Ethan Hayter, all the boys, they're all, all from there. And all super strong riders. So as soon as you hear, hear that, then you know he's going to be a monster. And then just starts drilling it big time. And this is when it's like, if you haven't made the front group, you're not making it now because it's it's full gas. They're now ca catching the remnants of the breakaway. Remember, early on, we saw this guy in green. He was cooked. Connor Brown was just toying with him and putting him in the bin. 
and about three kilometers late, he's getting caught by the peloton and game over from him straight on. I reckon he's going to try. He's going to try and hop on the back, but we all know it's not going to happen. I mean, on a five percent climb, you know, the, obviously the draft is decent, but um, you know, when you're when you're that cooked, it's always going to be a tough one. And we now still got the same five up front. Uh, I think this is a lotto under Sudal rider who's wearing the multicolored jersey, but Pidcock, I believe at this moment, has all three jerseys apart from the, well, no, after the stages, everyone, Colleone decides, you know what, sorry, this alpha rider decides, you know what, it's time to go on the attack. Pidcock's like, ah, oh, well, I'm just going to close that down. So closes it down very easily. Gloag just looks like he's chilling out, just having a good time. Um, and he's like, when you need me to get back on the front, boss, I'll get back on the front. Um, and Pidcock's just, you know, gliding up this climb. He's like, you can tell the guy ahead is rocking a bit more. He looks a bit more uncomfortable. Obviously, some people's style is a bit like that, but you can see Pidcock is pretty, pretty relaxed on a wheel. Um, the gap opens up pretty quickly. Obviously, Gloag's just chilling out, not going to um, close it because he's got Pidcock up the road. He'll just lean on other, lean on other people, which is a smart idea. Um, you know, it's a decent attack here, but it's nothing absolutely mental. Um, it was more, you know, just a slight acceleration. It wasn't a full-blown you know, attack. I doubt he really got over 600 watts, to be honest, but it was just obviously the hard tempo. It can be can be hard to follow the wheel. I mean, Pickup could have gone now. I don't really, I guess he just wants to play it safe. Um, Lois Sidal rider, under 23 rider, is also on the front as well. I think, I'm not even going to try and pronounce his name. It's like the Brisha or something. But anyway, you'll you'll see the results and you'll get to know what his name is. But I'm not great at Belgian, well, Dutch, that's Belgian, Flemish pronunciations. Here's Connor Brown dropping the last of his breakaway mates. And, um, when the cars go out the gap, you always know it's going to be a sad day. He sort of seems to be looking around trying to figure out the gap, but now nah, he's, he's got time um, to go. And Gloag is like, well, I spent a lot of time on the front, but I think I just need to sp spend more time on the front. So he gets on the front and it's like, right, I'm pulling back Connor Brown. Connor Brown looks like a pretty big boy as well. Like, you know, he doesn't look like a pure mountain goat. He looks more of one of the time trial lad who can get up climbs all right. And this cadence is very interesting. It literally looks like he's doing a UK hill climb up a 25% ramp. But, um... Seems to work for him, so we're not going to abuse him for it. But I definitely think um, if Bjarne Reese has anything to do with it, he seems to love the cadence. Uh, and now we get a lot of Sidal lad who's like, oh, you know, we might as well try and do some work. They're catching, uh, like, again, I don't want to pronounce their names. I can't remember it either, but they're catching a the fellow breakaway man from Colombia. Um, and Gloag is, let's pick up, get on the front bit. Everyone's sort of staring like, oh, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Um, it's sort of a bit of a stalemate. I guess they know they're going to catch him, and then this alpha guy gets on the front again. I don't, I don't really understand why, but um, clearly he had top, top tactics that I, I didn't quite get. Um, I guess they were trying to go for the stage win, but again, it's like, you know Pickock's stronger than you. If I were you, I'd just force Pickock to ride. Gloag again just gets on the front with 5k to go and really starts drilling it, and Pickock, I think, must have said to him, now, boss, this is the time to go, uh, and then Pickock launches it, and cheerio. Yeah, that's it. That is literally it. There's there's riders trying to get across now, like Colliani, but it's not happening. Um, he catches Connor Brown. The gap was like 46 seconds, goes straight around, and Connor Brown is like, yeah, I'm not getting on that. And that was a thermonuclear attack, as Lantern would say. Um, and I think this is Colliani, so I got him confused with this alpha rider. This is Colliani, um, and he he's, does a pretty good dig, to be fair, to try and get across. He knows that it does flatten off across the top, and that if he can get across here then, you know, he might be able to hang on with Pidcock for the remainder of the race. Alas, he does not. Pidcock is just absolutely flying um, and cheerio to everyone. And um, we've got another hilly stage today. Will we see a Pidcock win again? Three victories? I really wouldn't put it past him. Uh, he's on top form. It's not really fair in racing under 23s. He should have done what Remco did and just go straight to elites. But you know what? Fair play to him. You know, he's still got another year of under-23s next year left. And I'm sure he's going to win a lot more races next year because the competition is just is just too little. But the way, like, he's flying up the climb, his cadence is really good. Um, Like, yeah, sorry, this was Colliani. I'll put it in. Um, I was getting a little bit confused with the Zalf guy. Um, but anyway, yeah, this is Colliani, who, to be fair, is a pretty strong rider. We're going to go into his data, I think, afterwards um, and just see what numbers are. But Pickup rides at home. Very, very chill. And um, there we go. Cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this part of the video. Um, we're going to see the time difference, but it's it's a big time difference. And then we're going to go analyze Colliani's power file just to see, you know, the numbers. Pickup used to upload power, but I think he's come aware of people like me who look at his power and he doesn't want to share it, which is a shame. 
Uh, but you know, we everyone thinks they're too hard to share power data at the beginning, but then realize actually it's all good fun. Uh, so we'll go over to the next part in a minute. So unfortunately, Kevin Colliani's power day didn't didn't arrive, but we'll be able to get to see Giovanni Aliotto, Aliotti, sorry, uh, his power day. So he finished 43 seconds back uh, with the main group. Um, so these are the riders I was trying to pronounce: Henry Van der Nabil and Didier Merchant. Well, that's French. But he's not French. And Connor Brown was the bloke who was super strong, and Colliani came second. Um, so we'll go over to Aliotti's power day. So now, um, the man says he's 62 kilos. Um, Seemed, seemed to wrap all right 300 normalized so just shy of five watts per kilo um for three hours which is pretty solid but you know pretty solid just in general let alone seven hours into a race seven days into a race, seven days into the stage race so this is the whole climb uh 32k at five percent obviously a lot of that's going to be drafted he hit 1091 watts in the sprint which is pretty impressive to be fair obviously he was sitting on it's pretty fast there but still 340 normalized for an hour and 20 is very, very solid. So this is, it sort of goes, I guess this climb goes in ramp. So we look at the first part, 6%, 23.5k an hour. This is when just people were setting tempo. I like Zalf were te setting tempo and his team as well. Beer and Colliani's team, which is um, Biesi Arvedi. Uh, Aliotti rides for cycling team Friulia. Friuli. Uh, so yeah, 5.3 watts per kilo for half an hour. It's not, nothing crazy to be fair. And like, obviously that's going to drop a lot of the field, but not mental and this is really where it starts to pick up you can see glide getting on the front and drilling it um we've got some gps errors i think when they're going through tunnels as you saw in the footage there was a fair few tunnels but 5.6 watts per kilo for 26 minutes is really where it's starting to hot up and you can see there are a lot of it um towards the end is where pickoff attacked it attacked with about 4k to go and there's a little surge here but to be honest everyone knew that was it and then obviously pretty pretty chill 200 watts um preceding the sprint um and then the sprint in itself was pretty solid 1091 um and about 762 watts for 18 seconds um for 10 seconds the best power was 5 15 seconds 8 11 10 5 seconds 10 40 which is very solid we just got on the actual climb itself it was 5.4 watts per kilo for an hour which is super super strong to be fair um that is really high 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 numbers and pickock is obviously attacked and would have done better so you would have run at 5.4 in the last part um here when he was riding maybe you know 5.4 pickocks riding six watts per kilo and that's how he gets the um the 43 second gap um so anyway cheers for watching i hope you did enjoy this video uh we've got another stage of the under 23 giro um they seem to be going quite well so i'll make another one and um, we've also got a couple of blogs coming up but i'll probably upload them after the tour because there's a lot of tour footage um that we need to go through and power analysis of tomorrow's tour stage as well will also be up soon uh, so yeah i'll see you in the next one